Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Dawn of the Felines, a Japanese drama from 2017 that is part of the Nikatsu Roman Porno Reboot Project, which was a five-film project intended to be a throwback of sorts to the softcore films that were produced primarily in the 1970s and 1980s by Nikatsu Studio. Now, on this YouTube channel, I actually already reviewed two of the other films in this project, Anti-Porno, directed by Shion Sono, and Wet Woman in the Wind, directed by Akihiko Shiota, both of which I think are worth watching. I actually really enjoyed Wet Woman in the Wind in particular. I think it's very entertaining. Uh, check out my reviews for those, uh, for those movies, for my thoughts on those, as well as this whole Roman porno uh, genre or subgenre of film in general. So is Dawn of the Felines a good movie? Is this project three for three? I think it is. I think it's a pretty good flick. Now this is the story of three women who live in Ikebukuro, Tokyo, and they work for the same escort service called Young Wives Paradise, which provides sexual services to customers. So first we have Masako, who becomes enamored with one of her regular customers, and seems to want a more long-lasting relationship with him outside of their, I guess, business relationship, despite the fact that he's rather cold in terms of personality. And then we have Yui, a young girl who is also a pretty bad mother. She allows her little son to be physically abused and leaves him with some shady babysitters for long periods of time, while she works at the at the escort service over, say, the weekend or the week. Certainly, she's the most unlikable character of the three primary uh, leads here. She's also rather conservative, at least near the beginning of the film, in terms of the types of services that she provides to customers, which limits her uh, revenue stream. Thirdly, we have Rie, who services an elderly customer who is also a regular of hers. So each of these girls kind of have like their regular customers, so to speak, as well as uh, other random customers along the way. And the film does kind of focus on their interactions between their regulars more than random customers. And um, this man that Rie is involved with seems to want companionship more than anything else, really. Then you have the manager of the shop, who's you know, portrayed as kind of a goofball. He's kind of a, I guess you could say, comedic uh, content here. And uh, he's not abusive or anything towards the girls, but he's just kind of, he's not exactly professional either. He seems like kind of an amateur. And then there's the driver who drives the girls to their locations. Very, very inquisitive man and curious regarding the girl's job, which kind of annoys them because he keeps, he keeps asking all of them very personal questions that you probably shouldn't be asking. So this represents kind of like our core batch of characters. And I think the biggest strength of this film is that it feels genuine. You know, I could see these people existing in real life. Basically all of them, really. Um, their customers are, you know, they have a nice variety. Because each of the girls' regular customer is pretty different from each other. Uh, they're not really, I guess, they're not really portrayed as your typical, like, disgusting slime balls that would typically be portrayed in a film about prostitution, say. But, uh, and that, that kind of makes the interaction more interesting than you might think. And uh, pretty engaging, I would say. And even unpredictable at times. There are some, you know, plot developments and ulterior motives that surface as the film progresses. Performances are good all around. There's a bit of everyday humor sprinkled in, usually at the office of this place, which I think works. And as you might expect, there is... Quite a bit of nudity and sex in this as well, so expect some, uh, I guess you could say, steamy and or perverted moments at times. Uh, it has an 85 minute runtime, which is short and easy to sit through. Now I would say that this film does try near the end to infuse some additional eventful moments into, I guess, the story, and I think it might over overdo it just a little bit. You know, it. Uh, I wouldn't say it goes off the rails, but it definitely it spikes in terms of dramaticism a little bit. However, at the same time, it does communicate the fact that when you're in this profession, you don't really know who you're dealing with all the time, right? I mean, especially if you have a one-off customer, you have no idea. But even if you have a regular, you're not always sure 
you know, who they are, just from your experiences and interactions with them through this service. And I think it, it kind of uh, uh, reflects that quite well, I think, during the final third of the film. So, uh, you know, none of these characters, I think, are especially, like, complex, but it's the realism in this film that really makes it work. So, this was directed by Kazuya Shiraishi, who also directed Birds Without Names, which I reviewed on my channel uh, not too long ago. That was a good flick. And he also directed The Blood of Wolves, which is very high on my watch list, but I haven't had a chance to see it yet. So, this guy is kind of a an up-and-coming director. I know he's done some stuff in the past, but... He's a talented director that's not a household name to look out for. And like some other films that I've covered recently, you know, Dawn of the Felines is not exactly a film for most people, but I do think it's impressive that the Japanese film industry is able to make movies that center around sex, but make them interesting to watch. And I think Dawn of the Felines is worth watching. Even if it's not as purely entertaining as Wet Woman of the Wind or quite as weird as uh, anti-porno, uh, you should probably check out those films first, and then come to this one after that if you enjoy those. You know, Dawn of the Felines is a bit more simplistic, but it's also the most realistic and down-to-earth of the three films so far that I've seen from this project, so I do recommend this. It's available on Region 3 DVD with English subtitles, so with three of these five movies down, I still have only two left. You got White Lily, and Aroused by Gymnopades, which I have no idea what that means. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check those out when I can. If they're any good, I'll review them. If they're not, I might just skip a review because <laughs> no one will care. So if, if they're good, I'll let you know. And as always, I'll see you next time.